Uh, that was good stuff. All right. This afternoon, wanted to carry on with our theme, but not just for our graduates, something that all of us could use and all of us hopefully will understand and rededicate ourselves to. I am, and no amens on this, please. I'll be taking notes to see if anybody does. I am a simple person. I am a simple-minded person. I'm watching. And what I mean by that is this. Don't try to impress me with your vast knowledge and your big words on things way out here that I'll never understand. It may sound good, but give me something I can, I can latch on to. Give me something I can hang on to. Make it as simple as you can for me uh, so I can't miss it. And to get to heaven, we can make it sometimes more complicated than it really is. Now, now, don't get me wrong, it's not simplistic, it's not some flippant thing to get to heaven, you know, it's nothing to it. That's not what I mean. But God has shown us the way to do it. And not only has he shown us the way, it's a simple way, really. It's something that I don't have to be Einstein to understand. It's something I can do something I can understand, and it's something that I can follow. And so that's what we're going to try to do this afternoon uh, for all of us. Four steps to spiritual maturity. Yes, there's four points to the lesson. Again, young people, there's only three places to put points on that sheet. We're going to have to do something about that next time we print it off. But there's four points uh, to this lesson. Four things that if you do, listen very carefully, you will become spiritually mature. You will be. And there's, it's not you might... We hope that you do. You do these four things, you will, you will uh, get to spiritual maturity. As we become Christians, we begin a transformation in life. And notice what I said, we begin a transformation in life. Yes, some wonderful and great things happen the exact moment that you come up out of the water. Your sins are washed away. The Lord adds you to his church. You are a child of God. You are heaven bound. And all of these things happen instantaneously. But I want us to see that it is the beginning of a transformation process. It is a new birth, not the new, we're all done. We can just sit here and wait to die now. It's the new birth. It's a new start for us in Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And this transformation, as we said, doesn't happen overnight, which is not setting very well with our society. We like things that happen right away. We want overnight results. Give me a diet pill. Or I can lose weight overnight. Five pounds in the first two days. Give me that. Uh, we, if you'll notice, 10 minute workout, we, we try to sell, all you got to do is just for 10 minutes a day, if you'll do this, you can be in the best shape of your life, just, just 10 minutes a day. And oh, I, I can, I can suffer for 10 minutes and get through it. And, uh, and so that gets our attention. We're consumer driven uh, people and we want just to something, give me as least amount of work to do as quickly as I can get it done and give me the best results that can possibly be given for the least amount of work. Well, the transformation process as we have become Christians does not happen overnight. Yes, all of those things happen immediately uh, as far as the salvation of our souls. But to become the person that you're going to be, hopefully, as you mature in Christ, that is something that is a daily walk with God. We've got to have the mentality like this that you find in Scripture. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, evil, and all evil speaking as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Do you have the mentality that you want to grow each day? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Are you ready to fight? Are you ready to grow? Are you ready to mature? Four steps that will help us do this. And they're very simple to write down, very simple to commit to memory. But if you work on it each day, you can do it. You can, you can do it. It's not impossible. As a matter of fact, it's very possible. Anybody who truly desires to and will put forth the effort will be able to get to heaven and grow each day as a Christian. Number one, we must prepare our hearts. Luke 10, verse 30, 27. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, 
and strength. Prepare your heart. You shall love the, God, the Lord your God with all your heart. Love him with all that you have. Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. As a man thinks in his heart, that's what he is. So what, what you're thinking in your heart is who you really are. You ever really want to know who you truly are? What do you think about? What do you meditate on when nobody else knows what you're thinking and meditating about? That's who you really are. That's, that's, that's who you really are deep down. It's not what you put out before other people. It's not what comes out of your mouth that impresses people around you. What, what do you like to think about? What kind of things get you excited in your mind when nobody knows what you're thinking? That's really a better barometer of who we are. Look with, your, with me at 2 Corinthians chapter 10 as we consider preparing our heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, look at verses 4 and 5. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity and the obedience of Christ. Did you get that? Bringing every thought. Thought, not just action, but where does it start? With our thought, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. If you do not fully prepare your heart to serve God, you will find it impossible to remain faithful. Work on your heart first. And this may take a while. This might, this might take a while. But know that you're not the only one that needs to work on this. Work on your heart first. Take some time concentrating on the things that God would have you to have in your heart. I tell you what helps me with this, and maybe it will with you. And, and I know no two people are exactly alike. But listening to spiritual music throughout the day helps keep my mind pure when I'm doing that, driving down the road, um, alone time or whatever, listening to some, some spiritual music helps me in doing that. And as we talked about this morning, the people I hang around with helps me to keep my heart what it needs to be, um, reading our Bibles and things like that. But take some time and really, truly prepare your heart. Think about what type of heart you truly have. And you've got to be honest with yourself. And as I said, one of the biggest clues is, okay, what do I think about? What do I meditate upon when I'm not trying to impress anybody, when I'm not trying to put on airs? What gets my mind truly excited? And that'll tell you a lot. Get it to the place by working on your heart to where the things of God are the things that truly matter the most to you. Uh, we can see this clearly from the four different types of soil. The rocky soil doesn't take root. The thorny soil is choked out with the riches of the world, the cares and the pleasures of life. The wayside, they hear it, but then the devil takes away the word. Then you have the good ground, those with a good and noble heart. What kind of heart do you have this afternoon? You want to mature in Christ, we've got to have good hearts. So that's going to be the first place that we start. And, and this might be something that you don't get past number one, for a year, might not even be two years, but this is something that we work on, getting my heart where it needs to be. Number two, seek the law of the Lord. And why do I put this second? Shouldn't that be first? Well, really, they're point one and A and one B, but I've got to prepare my heart. I've got to have a heart that's ready to accept what God would have me to know. We are to seek the law of the Lord, number two. In order to grow in anything, you must seek out the information and study it so you can become more knowledgeable. It's true of anything, a job, a sport, a hobby. Uh, you've got to learn things about that. I wanted <laughs> an older man back in Indiana several years ago. He's passed away now. But he had some peanuts, and they were seed. And he said, uh, I got some extra peanut seed. You want to grow it? I said, well, can you grow peanuts in Indiana? He said, well, yeah. He said, 
And so he gave me this peanut seeds. Well, I have never grown peanuts a day in my life. The only thing I know about peanuts is that Jimmy Carter liked them a lot and grew them, I guess. But that's all I know, and I like to eat them myself. And so before I grew them, man, I had to do a lot of research. Okay, how in the world do I do this? And so then I grew them, and that's where all my knowledge was in growing them. And man, we had a good crop. We really did. For my first, and when I say grew them, in my little garden, I just had a little place over here for peanuts. But those that I planted, man, it was a bumper crop. But the thing that I did not research is how to prepare them. Uh, roasting peanuts without any salt is not good. <laughs> you, you might differ with that. Some of you health nuts, you might like the peanuts with no salt on them. I'm used to the ones you get at the ball games, saturated in salt. You break those things open and they are so good. Sometimes you put the shell in your mouth and just suck the salt off of them. That's the kind of peanut I'm talking about. Well, I grew all these peanuts. Mindy roasted them for me and I hated it. I didn't go far enough in my study. <laughs> How do I make them taste like the ballpark peanuts is really what I should have further studied. So wasted all those. Next year, he said, you want to grow some peanuts? I said, no, <laughs> I have no interest in doing that again this year. You have to, you have, to have a desire. In other words, you, you've got something. You have to have the desire to learn about it so you know what you are to do next. Psalm 119, verses 10 through 12 with my whole heart, the psalmist says, I have sought you. You see, you prepare the heart first. With your, my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O oh Lord. Teach me your statutes. We are to seek the law of the Lord. Psalm 119, verse 127. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold. Yes, then find gold. You prepare your heart. What would God want to be in my heart? And then you go and you learn about it. You seek it. And then I want to get to the place where David was and the other psalmists were. And that is, I love thy word. I've hidden it in my heart. I meditate on it both day and night. These are the things that make me happy in life is to know God through his word. To know God through his word. What a privilege it is that God has written down his heart for me. He's written down his diary, so to speak, his very personable account of what he was thinking, what he did, his hopes, his aspirations are all written down there. And what are his hopes and his aspirations? That one day Mark Reynolds will read his love letter to me. He will obey it. He will fall in love with me. He will want to be with me and I can save his soul. Seek it. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. Written by a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful father. Seek the law of the Lord. Jesus drove this home when he was here on the earth with us. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'll take care of you. All these things will be added unto you. You just, just seek him. Seek first those things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And just trust me, I'll take care of you. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, Be diligent, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman, and needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Seek the law of the Lord. Prepare your heart, then seek the law of the Lord. Are you studying daily? Are you reading daily? Are you meditating on what you've read don't just read through a chapter a day. Well, that's, a, that's a wonderful thing to do. Don't get me wrong. But read, if, if, if you can only take five verses a day, and then just think about it the rest of the day. That, that's how you really get to know God. That's how you really get to appreciate and fall in love with what his word says to us. Now, if you can do a whole chapter, if you can do a whole book a day and meditate on that, go for it. But if you are simple-minded like me, take five or six, seven verses, take a context, whatever it is, and then just spend the rest of the day just thinking about it. When you've got nothing else to think about, think about that. And that'll help you with point number one, won't it? Number three, we must do the commandments of the Lord. Now, let me just say, this is what really 
Hey, that's, that's not really accurate. I was going to say where the rubber meets the road, but I could say that for every single point and it'd be true. Let me take, put it this way. This is where the wheels sometimes come off the wagon. We can talk a good talk, uh, but this is where the wheels will sometimes come off the wagon. Have you ever seen, and, and <laughs> I'm just thinking of a particular case in particular, something that is not really funny, but there was a lady that um, used to be a member of a place where I was, and she was very, very good at telling you her faults. Some times to the point of embarrassment. No, I don't need to know all that, sister. No, no, stop right there. <laughs> You've sinned. Just stop right there. <laughs> we'll, we'll stop right there. Don't go into all the details. But, but she did. And she would go into the details of it. And man, you say, oh man, she really has seen the error of her ways. And, and she'll get on other people for doing some of the same things that she had done. And she'll tell them, you know, you can't be doing this. You got to be doing this and all of this. But the problem was, she knew, she talked about it, but she didn't take what she knew and put it into practice. She would go out that very same week and do some of the same things. And if we're honest with ourselves, that's probably one of the things that we struggle with too, isn't it? I know what's right. I know what my heart should desire. But sometimes putting it into practice is where it gets really difficult. Listen to what James said. Number three is we must do the commandments of the Lord. We are to seek the law of the Lord, and then we must do the commandments of our Lord. It's not enough to know. We must do what we have learned. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, even if I would have studied up to see how to roast peanuts and make them taste like the ballpark peanuts, even if I had done that, I couldn't have just picked them out of my garden and thrown them you know, to the side and say, okay, now I know, I know how to do it, but until I do it, it's not going to help me a bit, is it? As far as those peanuts, that's the same thing when it comes to uh, doing the commandments of the Lord. James chapter 1 you probably knew I was going to be going here as soon as I mentioned this point, but it's just such an important part to think about. Chapter twenty, chapter 1, verse 21, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But now verse 22, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. You want to know the most dangerous person that you can ever deceive? It's when you deceive yourself. You can deceive me and you'll still have a chance. You can deceive the elders of this congregation, you can still have a chance. You deceive everybody else in this congregation, you'll still have a chance because you know, even though nobody else knows, you know who you really are. You know how you answered that first question I asked. What do you think about when nobody knows what you're thinking about? You can put on a good front with far as everybody is concerned and still have a chance. But that moment when you convince yourself that you're not who you really are, but that's when your hope is gone. Because then you begin to think, I've got nothing to change. I'm perfect just the way I am. Man, when you hit that point, you're far gone. Deceiving yourselves. Verse 23, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. I, I love this passage for so many things. Number one, how foolish is it to look in the mirror and you see your hair all askew and you see just all kinds of things on your face that you can correct, the things that you can correct, 
and then walk away and not do anything about it. That's foolish, isn't it? The thing I love about this passage is, not only does it show how foolish it is, but also, notice what else it does. Verse 24, he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say whoever looks into the mirror and doesn't find perfection, all hope is lost. He is, is, deserves to be damned. He's unlike anybody else. He has no hope. He's not worthy of salvation. I never want to see him again. That's not what it says. It describes a man who looks in the mirror, the perfect law of liberty, the word of God, and sees, okay, this is what it says. This is what I'm doing that's what I need to improve. I thank God that it gives me room for improvement. Aren't you? Aren't you glad that as I look at this, and it doesn't say, all right, you come up out of the water in baptism, you look into the mirror, and if you're not like a man, a, a awesome, wonderful Christian man who's been a Christian for 60 years, if you're not like him at that point, you have no hope. doesn't say that it says i can look in there i can see flaws i can look at god's word it can show me how to improve them and listen i can get better in christ i love that i love that and what i love the most is this i'm still working on it God is working with me. And, and I can't think of anything else. I don't want to put anybody else on the spot. So let me just say it like this. I know when I look in the mirror, I've got a long ways to go. I, I know that. And that's not false humility. And neither is this next statement false boasting. But I like so far how far I've come. Does that make sense? And, and, that's, and that's, that's not boasting. I, I know I've got a long way to go. But I like the changes God has made in me as I've conformed to his word. And you will too. And you do too, don't you? That's what I love about the word of God. It takes me farther than I could ever have come without it. And it can only take me farther. I'll never be done. Some of you older men and women in here, you, you could get up here and say the exact same thing that I just said, couldn't you? You got a long ways to go, but you've liked the growth that you've experienced so far, haven't you? And, and, I, and I say that because I had very little to do with it. Only God... <laughs> made all of these things possible. And then the last point, and this one we'll just touch on and, and be finished. We must prepare our hearts. We are to seek the law of the Lord. We must do the commandments of the Lord. And then number four, share the truth with other people. Share the truth with other people. And let me just say this, and then we'll be finished. You want help growing spiritually, let everybody you know, know that you're a Christian who is seeking to serve the Lord. And that it's going to be your desire to get them to obey the Lord as well. Now, not only does that let them know, okay, this guy cares about me. He wants what's best for me. But number two. You put yourself out there. You put yourself in the middle of a goldfish bowl, glass all around, and now what have you done there at your job? You've let everybody know, man, this guy's a Christian. And what will they do? All right, this guy's a Christian. Either one, they're going to say, I'm going to watch that guy. If that's what being a Christian is, I'm going to try to be just like him. Or number two, They'll say, all right, this guy says he's a Christian. I'm going to watch for flaws in him, and I'm going to wait for him to falter. One of two things that they'll do to you. But you know what both of those things will do to you? It'll make you accountable to yourself and to your God. 
all right, I've got to walk the walk because <laughs> this guy's looking on me to see what a true Christian is, and this guy's looking at me to watch a true Christian fall. I can't let either one of them down. <laughs> I've got to live right. And so you put yourself out there, and it really helps you mature because you now realize everybody knows I'm a Christian. I better act like it, and not only act like it, I better be one. Those four things. I truly believe you implement those things in your life, you'll go to heaven. And not only that, you will love yourself more every single month, every passing year. You look to see where you are in 10 or 15 or 20 years, and you'll love how far you've come, even though you have a long way to go. I know some of you, and some of you I've known quite a while, and some of you... Uh, I've just gotten to know since we've been here, but we've been able to share some stories about your past. And if anybody had ever told you 5, 10, 15 years ago you would be at church on a Sunday, you wouldn't have believed it. But how about a Sunday afternoon service? <laughs> Yet here you are. You see what I mean? Don't you love where you've come, how far you've come? Even though you've got a long ways to go, take some time every once in a while just to appreciate how far the Lord has brought you. You want to grow in Christ? Let me tell you something. You look at every single person in this building. All of us are just alike in this regard. We've come a long way, got a long way to go. And when you join us, when the Lord adds you to his church after your obedience to the gospel of Christ, being baptized into Christ... The exact same thing will be said about you. You've come a long way, got a long way to go. Let's go there together. Let's be the family that God intends us to be. Won't you come while together we stand and sing?